News. Good evening. This is the CBS Evening News. Dan Rather reporting. Added today to the 214 American servicemen now confirmed dead from the Beirut bombing are at least two more U.S. military men killed during an invasion of the Caribbean island of Grenada. More than 20 other Americans were wounded, some of them seriously. About 1,900 U.S. Army Rangers and Marines this morning assaulted the small island, which measures only 12 miles by 21 miles. Grenada's population is about 110,000, roughly the size of Cedar Rapids, Iowa. The U.S. assault force later was joined by 300 representatives from six Caribbean nations. President Reagan explained a few hours later that he believed he had no choice, that the invasion was necessary to protect Americans on Grenada from a Cuban-connected military junta. The American military has not allowed any journalists on Grenada, so our coverage begins with Sandy Gilmore on Barbados, near Grenada, and with David Martin at the Pentagon. The invasion started before dawn this morning. The first public hint of what was happening was the departure of about 50 U.S. Marines from the Barbados International Airport. Initial information was kept top secret, but about two hours after the attack began, CBS News took these pictures off the Grenada coast. An aircraft carrier, several warships, military helicopters. Marines took control of Grenada's airports and by 9 o'clock, from a portable transmitter, began broadcasting a soothing message. Your cooperation will ensure that peace and democracy are restored in the near future. The international airport here at Bridgetown, Barbados, became a military airport. Invasion forces, including U.S. Marines, used it as a staging area. Caribbean countries were outraged at the bloody military takeover of last Wednesday, as their troops, including those from Jamaica, Barbados, and Dominica, were airlifted in during the day, reports filtered in from Grenada. An American medical student, one of several hundred trapped on Grenada, spoke on ham radio. Okay, be advised that there, uh, as the gunships passed over, there were uh, quite a bit of ground fire uh, from, the, from the immediate area. There was gunfire directly outside of our campus, uh, and maybe not more than, uh, than uh, 100 feet, 200 feet away. Over. Uh, two of them are six wounded. Who are they? Over. Okay, uh, wounded are uh, our U.S. Uh, Marines. Uh, okay, they are U.S. Marines. Uh. As the hours went by, it was clear the U.S. and Caribbean troops had gained control. A Barbados radio station talked to a man in Grenada by telephone. A happy man. Oh, good, man. <laughs> We're free this time. We're really free. Sandy Gilmore, CBS News, Barbados. It was a classic pre-dawn strike. At 5.30 this morning, Army Rangers and Marine assault troops, 1,900 in all, seized the island's only two airfields. The Marines went into Pearls Airport by helicopter from amphibious ships offshore. The Rangers took Salinas Airport, some of them parachuting in to remove obstacles from the runway so airplanes could land with the rest of the invasion force. Psychological warfare teams set up radio transmitters and began calling on the defenders to lay down their arms. But some of them didn't. At one point, American planes came under fire from Soviet-made anti-aircraft batteries, but were quickly silenced by Air Force C-130 gunships. At least one U.S. helicopter was forced down, although it is not clear whether by fire or mechanical difficulty. On the ground, American soldiers came under small arms fire, some of it coming from Cubans. There are 500 Cuban construction workers lengthening the runway at Salinas, and a much smaller number of Cuban military advisors at a nearby training camp for the tiny 1,200-man Grenadian army. Between two and 5,000 members of the island militia were called up over the weekend as invasion fears mounted. Once the American Rangers took the airfield, they moved to secure the nearby campus of St. George's Medical School, home of roughly half the 1,000 Americans on the island. So far, U.S. officials say, no Americans have been evacuated. But U.S. forces have more to do than just protect American citizens. They are there, in the words of a Pentagon briefer, to quote-unquote neutralize the Grenadian armed forces, preferably by peaceful surrender, by force of arms if necessary. Reinforcements for the Marines are waiting offshore on the carrier Guam, along with air cover from the aircraft carrier Independence. Additional Army troops would come from bases in the southern U.S. U.S. officials insist American troops will leave Grenada in a matter of days as soon as a caretaker government can assume control. But first, Pentagon officials say, all pockets of resistance must be cleared out. That could take time, and more importantly, it could cost lives. David Martin, CBS News, the Pentagon.
In addition to at least two U.S. servicemen killed in the invasion of Grenada, 14 Cubans were reported killed. It is not known how many Cubans may have been wounded. There are no reports of any civilians killed or wounded, either from Grenada or the United States, nor are there any reports of any Soviet casualties. The genesis of today's invasion was last Wednesday. Grenada's Marxist Prime Minister, Maurice Bishop, had been under house arrest by more hardline Marxist military leaders. Thousands of Bishop's supporters freed him and then escorted him to the center of the capital, St. George's. There, soldiers commanded by Cuban-trained General Hudson Austin shot and killed Bishop and several of his cabinet ministers. A 16-man military council was established with Austin as the leader. Bob Simon now takes a look at the argument for the strategic importance of Grenada to the United States. The Grenadans said their new all-weather night and day airport with its 10,000-foot runway built by Cubans was for jumbo jets carrying tourists. Washington said, nonsense. The Grenadans said the new port facilities under construction were for banana boats. Washington said, no way. Washington believed this tiniest Caribbean country was being redesigned from a tourist haven to a communist air base and a way station, a stopping off point for Cuban soldiers on their way to Africa, for East Bloc supplies on their way to Nicaragua. Why do it now? Well, last week's coup provided confusion and chaos, ideal cover for a counter coup. Do it now before the new government consolidates power and gains legitimacy. And then there were those American medical students. But a CIA official told the House Intelligence Committee today that he had no information about any threat to the students or any new threat to American security. Secretary Schultz spoke today about an atmosphere of violent uncertainty in Grenada, sort of difficult to imagine in this lyrical landscape beneath these cloud-shrouded hills. The beaches seem designed for sun worshippers, not Marines, Administration officials insisted today the Marines won't stay much longer than the standard package tour, but Maurice Bishop, the man whose death was used as an occasion for invasion, once warned that, perhaps like Lebanon, his country is very easy to get to and very difficult to leave. We have spent a long, long time trying to develop friendly relations with the Americans. But if they send soldiers or mercenaries to fight in our country, they will discover it is easier to land than to leave. Bob Simon, CBS News, New York. The White House now says the Defense Department is saying that there are probably three Americans killed in the invasion. Cuba has been reporting what happened on Grenada, saying Cuban workers there were resisting. Moscow denounced the invasion and called for an immediate U.S. withdrawal.